Here's some examples from the day 39 assignment. Uh, here we're working with cube root functions. So uh, here they want us to complete the prediction of the effect of the parameters of the graph of the cube root function. So this one, I know what's going to happen with transformations. That's going to be by identifying A, B, H, and K. A here on the outside is a 3. B is a 1. Since there is no adding or subtracting inside of the uh, square root, H is going to be 0, and K is going to be 4. So... Here they want to start off with translations. We're going to be the only translation is that we're going to go four units, and since it's k, it's going to be up. Positive four is going to go up, and we're going to be stretched. It was being stretched by a. It's vertically by a factor of three. Okay, select so like the graph of the cube root function. So we'll graph this on our own. 5 cube root of 3 plus 2. G of x is equal to 5 cube root of x plus 2. Okay. So A is 5, B is 1, H here is 0, and K is 2. Now, cube roots don't have an endpoint like square roots do. They don't even have a change of direction, but they do have a point where the, uh, the graph tends to be almost vertical. It's for an instantaneous moment. It almost becomes totally vertical uh, before it starts to flatten out again. So that's where H and K is going to be. So that's going to give me a point for free. So right now I know I have a point at 0, 2. Now, in order to get a nice definition here on a cube root, three points is really not going to be enough. You, you, you want to get five points, because if you only use three points, you're going to get a straight line. And I need two of those points to start off positive and two of those points to be negative. So since I don't see any um, fractions here, I'm going to use points, uh, the parent points 1, 1, and 8, uh, 2, because the cube root of 8 is 2. But then I'm also going to use negative 1, negative 1, and then negative 8, negative 2. Try to keep it as small as possible so I can fit it in my window. Now, what's going to happen here is that nothing's going to happen to the x's, because the x's are supposed to be divided by 1 and add 0, so nothing's going to happen to the x's. I'm still going to have a 1 here. But then the y's are going to be times 5 and plus 2. 1 times 5 plus 2 is 7, so I'm going to have a point at 1, 7. Here I'm going to keep my 8. 2 times 5 plus 2 is going to be 12. So 8, 12 is going to be part of my graph. Now let's go on the negative side. Negative 1 is going to stay the same. So then negative, negative 1 times 5 plus 2. So negative 1, negative 3, and then negative 8 will stay the same. Negative 2 times 5 plus 2, that's going to be at negative 8 and uh, negative 8. So now I have all of my points that I want to Let's graph them 0, 2, 1, 7. 8, 12, which is up here, negative 1, negative 3, and negative 8, negative 8. If I try to connect the dots with as smooth a line as possible, that would look something like that. So let's go look through the points that are uh, or the graph that I was given to see which one looks like what I just finished graphing. This looks pretty tall, but that would make sense because we've undergone a vertical stretch of 5, so it looks much taller than a cube root graph would look like, and we've also had a vertical translation of 2. If we look through the points, the point where it's at its tallest should be at 0, 2. That's the first one I would focus on. And... 
you can compare the rest of the points if you'd like, like here this one. Uh, here's the 0 2 I was focused on, but we also have a point at 8, 12, which we knew we were going to have, and a point at negative 8, negative 8, which we knew that we were going to have. This is also nice because this illustrates why you can't only use three points, because like if they didn't have the graph there, and these were the only three points I know, notice how the points line up, and you're going to get confused, and you're going to think that you have a straight line. But this is D. That's all they wanted. So that's correct. And then now finally, last example. Let's now write the function. So now they're going to give us the graph. They want us to write the function. Here, the, the way that this is written, they want us to find A, which means we're going to leave B at 1. So A is what we're going to be looking for. B is going to be 1. And I, I know I can find H and K from the point where this gets its tallest. Now, they make this a little bit difficult to do because they don't highlight any points, so <clears throat> there's going to be a little bit of guesswork involved, sadly. Um, this looks here at its tallest to be around 3, negative 5, and I can tell from the selections that they're giving me that <clears throat> that would probably be correct. So I'm going to say that H is at 3 and K is at uh, negative 5. But I need one more point. So... Again, this would have been made easier if they would have actually highlighted a point for me. But let's see, I'm pretty confident that this is passing through the y-axis at 0, negative 2. So let's, let's use that and hope that works. So x is at 0 and y is at negative 2. So now let's write it in their form. Negative 2, which was the y, is equal to the a that I'm looking for and the cube root of x minus h. So 0 minus 3. Um, uh, is that going to work? I hope that works. We'll see. That'd be H is at 3, K is at, and K would be at negative 5. But then when I do... When I do 0 minus 3, you can't take the cube root of of 3. Well, let's see. Let's just see what happens. I don't know. Let's, let's see. Negative 2 is equal to a cube root of negative 3 minus 5. So... I want to get A by itself, um, plus 5, plus 5. So I get 3 is equal to the cube root of negative 3, but I can't take the cube root of negative 3. That's A times the cube root of negative 3. If I were to divide the 2, see, that can't be right, so that means it's not passing through 0, negative 2. Did I do everything right? Um x is 0, y is negative 2, h is at positive 3, k is at negative 5. Hmm. Ideally, what I would want is there to be a perfect cube in there, but that would happen if x was like 1, for instance. But when x is 1, which is around here, I can't tell what y is. Maybe when x is negative 1, but even when x is negative 1, I can't tell what y is. I think this is a pretty poorly drawn graph. Um, Is there another point where this would be passing through? Uh, maybe at no, 8, no. 0 minus. If I have to do minus, how about at 4? 
let's try this out for an x and a y because I, I need there to be a perfect cube inside of a cube root and this is not working out right now so let's try out this point here um, sorry this would still be and here we would still be minus three let's try out four and let's say let's see if maybe a four comma negative seven would be part of the graph see if that'll work four negative seven which would mean negative seven would be here and four would be here negative seven would equal a now now i'd get the cube root of one which is helpful because the cube root of one is one and one a is just a so negative seven is equal to a minus five plus five plus five so a would be negative two and that is one of our choices so let's go with that one it's a poorly drawn graph and unlike with the square root they didn't highlight any points for us they didn't kind of cue us in as to which points to pick but let's see if we were able to outsmart them negative two then here we have the minus already so we would put just h is three and k is negative five and that's correct